Hey everyone, welcome back for another deep dive. You know how we do this, right? Get right to the GC stuff. And today we're talking Hill Helicopters, HX50, all those sweet updates from that February 2025 YouTube AMA they did. Yeah, they didn't hold back. It's almost two hours packed with, you know. Tech deep dives. Details. I mean, yeah, you could get lost in there, but don't worry, we got you. We're serving up the need to know info on a silver platter. Like one of the things that struck me was their commitment to vertical integration in aviation that's pretty rare it is yeah basically they're like diying the whole helicopter right? right from the engine to the what are those tiny parts called oh you mean like the bearings and stuff yeah bearings all that stuff but is that a good idea really i mean it sounds <laughs> kind of risky well jason the ceo he really lays out their reasoning in the ama and it makes sense he talks about control over timelines costs quality so no more waiting around for parts exactly and no more you know if something goes wrong they're not pointing fingers at suppliers it's all in-house yeah and there's proof in the pudding remember how everyone was freaking out about how clean the production facility was in the video oh yeah I remember those comments. Some people were saying they'd eat off the floor. Yeah, exactly. And Jason even joked about serving canapes off the factory floor. You get a sense of humor. Yeah, but it makes you think, right? That level of cleanliness has to translate to a higher quality product. For sure. It shows they're serious about the details. Yeah. Okay, so they've got the whole self-sufficiency thing down. But let's talk tech, the heart of the HX50 the GT50 engine. This is where it gets really cool. It's a clean sheet design they started from scratch. Like a blank canvas. Exactly. So they can incorporate all the latest tech and optimize every little thing. And there were some big wins in the AMA, right? Yeah. Like that first starter generator test at, what, 40,000 RPM? Oh, yeah, that was huge. And remember, they're making even the high-speed bearings in-house. Wow, the precision you need for those speeds. It's yeah. mind-blowing. And then there's that annular combustor. It looks so simple, but... It's deceptive, right? All the engineering behind those swirling flames and then those fuel nozzles, they're like microscopic. It's crazy the level of detail. But you know what's funny is they talk about it all so casually, like it's no big deal. But then Jason tells that story about the team being like nervous first time dads during that starter generator test. Oh, I love that it shows their human, e brilliant engineers get butterflies, right? Right. So we've talked about these super precise parts, but how does that translate to those turbine blades, the things that actually make the helicopter go? Right, so it starts with investment casting. They pour molten super alloy into these incredibly detailed molds. Sounds like an art project. It kind of is, and they grind and machine them to create this thing called a fir tree root, which attaches the blade to the turbine disc. Fir tree root, why do they call it that? Well, because it looks like what, it's this intricate shape that has to fit perfectly and withstand insane forces. So any imperfection could be a disaster. Yeah, exactly. So having that in-house casting facility and their meticulous inspection process, yeah. it's all connected. Okay, that's impressive. Yeah. But it's clear they're not just focused on the tech. They haven't forgotten about the pilot, have they? Yeah. All those digital cockpit updates, they sound amazing. All right. They're really focused on the human element, making things user-friendly. Absolutely. Like that intuitive autopilot. Yeah. And the warnings that actually make sense, not just a bunch of beeps and flashing lights. Yeah. And don't forget about the passenger-controlled MFD. No more backseat drivers complaining about the music choices. That's huge. So they're thinking of everyone. It's all about improving safety, too. Mm. Reducing pilot workload, making things easier. And mm. then there's that whole digital record-keeping thing with the Hill app. Yeah. No more bulky logbooks. Everything's stored <laughs> digitally. Streamlined maintenance pilot training. The whole shebang. They're really thinking ahead. Yeah. Okay, but let's be realistic. All this vertical integration and innovation, it can't be cheap, right? Well, you'd think so, but Jason presented a pretty optimistic financial picture in the AMA. Really? Yeah, strong order books, solid cash reserves, and get this positive cash flow already. How is that even possible? It seems like their contracts are structured to bring in funds early on, so they're not bleeding money during development. It's pretty smart. And they have a good relationship with the UK Civil Aviation Authority. So certification should be smooth sailing. Hopefully. But they did mention some hiccups with local planning permission for their production facilities. Ugh, bureaucracy. But even with those challenges, their financial situation looks good. They're clearly not cutting corners. Exactly. Which is good to hear, especially with all the concerns about cybersecurity and software bugs, you know, with a system this complex. Yeah, that was a big question going into the AMA. And Jason addressed it head on. He talked about all the safeguards they have in place, redundant sensors, error checking. They even isolate those flight control computers to prevent outside interference. That's good to know. I feel better already. Yeah. <laughs> but let's get to the question everyone's asking. When can we actually fly this thing? Patience, my friend. They laid out some key milestones, engine runs later this year. 
flight testing after that. But the big event is in September, a customer event. September. What's happening then? Are they going to unveil the HX50 in all its glory? Well, Jason was pretty tight-lipped about the specifics, just some vague hints about exciting surprises. Ugh, the suspense is killing me. I know, right? But it sounds like it'll be more than just a static display. Ooh, okay. I can't wait. It's amazing what they're doing with a relatively small team, less than 100 people. It's like a David and Goliath story in the aerospace world. Except David has a jet engine and a super sleek helicopter. Yeah. And I have to say, their community-driven approach is really refreshing. Totally. They answered every single question in the AMA, no matter how technical or how basic. It shows respect for their customers. They're building something special. It's like they're creating a community of passionate aviators who are all in on this journey. Speaking of journeys, this whole vertical integration thing makes you wonder, right? Uh, how? Could this be the start of a bigger trend? Could Hill helicopters inspire a whole manufacturing revolution in the sky? That's a great question. Could we see more companies taking control like this, bringing production in-house, building stronger bonds with their customers? It's a fascinating thought, and that's what we'll explore in the next part of our deep dive. We'll go even deeper into the GT50 engine's design and unpack those innovations that make it so unique, so stay tuned. All right, so let's pick up where we left off, and you know we were talking about those high-speed bearings and the insane precision involved in making them. Yeah. It still blows my mind that they're doing all that in-house. It's like they built a watch factory inside a helicopter factory. Right. It shows you how much they value controlling every step of the process. But those bearings, they're just one piece of the puzzle. They support those rotating shafts that basically drive the whole engine. And those shafts are connected to the compressor, right? The thing that sucks in all the air and squeezes it tight, ready for combustion. Exactly. And this is where you see Hill's focus on simplicity. They went with a single-stage centrifugal compressor instead of a more complex multi-stage axial compressor. Okay, hold on. I need a quick refresher here. What's the difference between those two and why should I care? Good question. So imagine a centrifugal compressor, like a spinning fan. It throws the air outward, increasing its pressure and velocity and axial compressor. It's more like a series of rotating blades squeezing the air in a straight line. Okay, I think I'm picturing it. So why go with this centrifugal one? Is it just to keep things simple? Well, simplicity is definitely a factor. A single-stage centrifugal compressor is more robust, less likely to get damaged by stuff, which is important for a helicopter engine, plus it's more efficient at lower speeds, which is perfect for a helicopter that's doing a lot of hovering. Makes sense. There's all about practicality and reliability. Exactly. But that doesn't mean they're skimping on innovation. <laughs> they've still managed to squeeze a lot of performance out of that simpler design, like they've tweaked the compressor to increase airflow and boost efficiency. Tweaked it? How is that even possible? I mean, it already sounded pretty impressive. It's all about the details. They improve the surge and stall margins, which means the engine is less likely to choke or stall under extreme conditions. So even when you're pushing the helicopter to its limits, the engine will be more stable and reliable. Exactly. And they also made improvements in managing those axial loads, the forces pushing on the bearings, so smoother operation, longer engine life. Wow, so even those little tweaks make a big difference. It all adds up, right? It shows their attention to detail constantly refining and optimizing. And that attention to detail is everywhere, even in the seemingly mundane parts. Remember those fuel spray nozzles? Oh, yeah, those tiny things that atomize the fuel. Yeah. Yeah, I was amazed by how precise those things are. They're essential for getting the perfect fuel-air mixture, and they develop these dual orifice nozzles one for low fuel rates during ignition, and another for high power outright. So it's like they're conducting a microscopic symphony of fuel and air. That's a great way to put it. And to make these tiny parts, they've got these specialized micro-machining centers. They can pump out those nozzles in minutes, each one meeting those incredibly tight tolerances. Okay, so I'm told. They're not messing around. But even with all this precision engineering, I keep coming back to those turbine blades. The things that convert all that hot gas into the power that makes the helicopter fly. And you're right to focus on them. Remember the investment casting process, how they create those complex shapes. It's a real blend of art and science. Yeah, I can still picture that molten metal flowing into the molds, like liquid fire being shaped into something precise. And then all the grinding and machining to make those fir tree roots. The tolerances are insane. And the stakes are high. Any flaw in those blades could be catastrophic. That's yeah. why they have that rigorous inspection process, every single blade under a microscope, to make sure it's perfect. Glad to hear it. It's reassuring to know they're not taking any chances. Mm -hmm. But, you know, this whole conversation has me thinking. We've talked a lot about the physical stuff, the metal, machining. But 
the GT50 is just a mechanical thing, right? There's a lot of software and electronics in there too. You're right about that. And it's an aspect that often gets overlooked. The GT50 has some serious digital brain power in the form of the FADC system. FADC. That sounds pretty high tech. Break it down for me. What is it exactly? Think of it like the engine's digital maestro. It stands for Full Authority Digital Engine Control, and it's basically a sophisticated computer that's constantly monitoring and adjusting the engine in real time. So it's like having a mini flight engineer on board, tweaking and optimizing things for peak performance. That's a great analogy. FADE manages everything. Fuel flow, ignition, timing, temperature control, even safety features. It keeps things running smoothly and efficiently. Wow. So it's not just mechanical brilliance. They're adding a layer of digital intelligence on top of that. Exactly. And that's what makes Hill's approach so different. They're not just tacking on electronics as an afterthought. They're designing the whole system, mechanical and digital, to work together seamlessly. It's like they're composing a symphony where every instrument plays its part perfectly to create this masterpiece of engineering. You got it. And this holistic approach this blending of cutting edge tech with solid engineering principles, that's what makes the HX50 so compelling. It's like they're taking the best of the past and fusing it with the possibilities of the future. And that future thinking, it goes beyond just the engine. Remember, they're taking the same integrated approach to the entire HX50 from the digital cockpit to the safety systems. It's clear they're not just building an aircraft, they're building a vision for the future of aviation. And we're just getting started in the next part of our deep dive. We'll go even deeper into those design choices that make the GT50 truly unique. Okay, so we've talked about all the cool tech in the GT50, the precision, yeah. the software, but what really makes it stand out from other engines? You know, it's funny, for all the advanced stuff we've discussed, one of the GT50's biggest strengths is actually its simplicity. Simplicity, wait a minute. We've been talking about micro machine nozzles and turbine blades that look like they belong in a sci-fi movie. How is that simple? That's the clever part. They didn't overcomplicate things. They focused on proven, reliable technologies. They went back to basics, but executed them perfectly with modern manufacturing. So it's like they took a classic design and gave it a 21st century upgrade. Exactly. And that's why they went with the single stage centrifugal compressor, remember? Yeah. Simpler, more robust. Perfect for a helicopter that's spending a lot of time hovering, but they still found ways to innovate. Like that annular combustor, it's so efficient. Right, all those cooling holes and that perfect fuel air mix, Ugh. it's beautiful. Less waste, more power, and better for the environment. Can't argue with that. And those dual orifice fuel nozzles, so smart. Two nozzles in one optimizing fuel delivery for every situation they really thought of everything. It's clear they didn't cut any corners, but it makes me wonder. What's a f We've been talking about how unique Hill's approach is, but could this be the start of something bigger? Could they be leading the way for a whole new era of aviation manufacturing? That's an interesting thought. Could we see more vertical integration in the industry? More companies taking control like this, faster innovation, better quality, stronger relationships with customers. It's an exciting possibility. And that's what makes Hill Helicopter so fascinating. They're not just building a helicopter, they're challenging the way things are done. They're giving us a glimpse of what the future of aviation could look like. A future where innovation and community and a passion for pushing the limits are at the heart of it all. Well, that brings us to the end of our deep dive into the Hill Helicopters HX-50. We've covered a lot of ground from the tiny details of the engine to the big picture implications for the industry. Hopefully you've learned something new and maybe even gotten a little bit inspired by what's happening in the world of aerospace. We've only just scratched the surface. There's so much more to come as the HX-50 program continues. And we'll be here to keep you updated break it all down and make sense of it all. But in the meantime, we want to hear from you. What are your takeaways from this deep dive? Do you think Hull's approach could revolutionize the industry? Let us know your thoughts, your questions, your reactions. We're all in this together. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. Until next time, keep looking up and keep exploring.